message 0917 sent by 2502673914. Hi, this is Jenny calling from MLA Lauren Dirksen's office. Thank you very much. We did get your recorded message, but I do need you to send that to us in an email um, on how you feel. That was exactly put in your recorded message. I need to end up getting the MLA to hand deliver these to Dr. Bonnie and the minister's office. So I do need it in an email. You could please type that and email it to lauren.dirksen.mla at ledge.bc.ca. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. I had left a voicemail to which one of your staff members replied letting me know to email you my concerns pertaining to the proposed vaccine passport. We run several businesses out here in the Chicolton, a small farm, a photography, videography service. As well, I have invested almost 30 years to fitness, health and wellness, and the general well-being of clientele, which has included over the decades, forestry firefighters, semi-professional athletes, mixed martial artists, soccer moms, hockey, football, and lacrosse players. My wife, who works for Dawson, and I are disappointed at this proposal for a myriad of reasons. The first and foremost being that we believe that one has domain over their own bodies as proposed by our God-given rights. Now our legal rights are supposed to protect the latter, but it seems that either threat, coercion, bribery, and now a literal segregation of society, a caste system where one group has rights and privileges over another, is to be the new normal. We find this contentious and problematic from the get-go. As I am sure your office is aware of, there is a movement in BC and Canada-wide for business, businesses to not enforce this proposed mandate due to it infringing on several principles from constitutional to the case in which, and I quote, Dr. Henry in her capacity as a provincial health officer for the province of British Columbia and the Crown will stand trial as ordered by the court starting 17th of April 2023. Another factor that bothers us is that the BC government's own statistics and with the population of BC, there is a 0.03 chance of anyone in BC dying from COVID-19. As of the 31st of August, that's 1,814 lives lost. Whereas since COVID began, we have lost 2,036 lives as of February of this year. That alone proves that a resident of BC has a greater chance of ODing than of dying from COVID. A factor that sadly complements the above number is the impact on our youth as again the numbers of suicide in BC have has risen as many doctors, healthcare professionals from around the world warned of the detrimental fallout of lockdowns aside from the economical fallout of the many many small businesses which crashed and burned while multinational corporations had in 2020 their most profitable year ever. We respect the person's choice be it the lifestyle of the lead their sexual orientation or political preference, as these things are none of our business. And again, I might add, add that if it is indeed a global pandemic that warrants the extreme measures that have taken their toll on society, literally ripped the very fabric of families, friendships apart, we find it reprehensible that this has been allowed to continue, be it even exaggerated to instill fear and panic in the general public, which in itself is lending it to a splintering of society, the vaxxed versus unvaxxed. What, Lauren, is next? Remove those who exercise their God-given rights? It was in my parents' lifetime that Japanese Canadians, even those born in Canada, were identified as a threat during World War II and across Canada, we put them in internment camps. Back on May 25th was when Dr. Henry publicly stated, and I quote, This virus has shown us that there are inequities in our society that have been exacerbated by this pandemic. And there's no way that we will recommend inequities be increased by the use of things like vaccine passports for services with public access here in British Columbia." Unquote. Now this seems rather hypocritical when one factors in the 99.97% survival rate this virus has in BC. One last thing I'd like to point out is a very real and ongoing epidemic that both the CDC and WHO have published papers on, and that is the four decades long epidemic of obesity that touches every country on earth. We have, on average, a 37% obesity rate worldwide, Lauren, and, as also evidenced by the both CDC and WHO, over 70% of those who have succumbed to COVID were obese with several other comorbidities. 
And there are a growing number of physicians, doctors, and specialists around the world that propose numerous solutions to where we, as a society, find ourselves. I shall conclude this email with a 15-point plan laid out by one of them. Common sense should prevail, and we as a society should invest more efforts into our overall health and wellness. But at this time, I humbly digress, as the level of censorship online dictates that you're not allowed to post or say certain things unless they conscribe to the official narrative of being in a global pandemic where hundreds of millions were purported to die. This is obvious to anyone not driven by fear or case numbers. The dead speak volumes as the numbers don't lie. Thank you in advance for your time, your due diligence ensuring fair representation for all peoples regardless of race, religion, orientation, or medical history. As we say to our clients, your first wealth is your health, invest wisely. Kindest regards, Buddha Sudu Gaines, Bull Farms, the Drill Sergeant at Bull Fitness, Pelican Perspectives.